I am unashamed. What about you? So I see all the activity out here. Uh, that must have been your hunting guest from this morning. <laughs> Actually, they're they, all heading to Texas. They who are who were they? What they do? Uh, he actually, we hunted with them in South Texas, and but he just came by to visit. He didn't. Oh. He didn't go hunting. Oh, okay. He was a really we, interesting visit because uh, Ed Marshall, his his uh, cousin, is my age, and he heads up Kingdom Dog Ministries. I, I've heard, I've seen a video of this. Yeah. It's really interesting. It really is. He takes well, his dog. Did, did he show you all the stuff with the dog? Did I all the some... spiritual <laughs> principles involved with dog training is apropos, as they say, for human beings. In other words, you discipline them because you love them. You train them because they get in the, you know, you know. I mean, look, this morning discipline, I discipline, train, love. It, it all comes out with him training his dog. The dog is just amazing. So he applies the biblical principles of what he does in dog training. So that means I need to repent. They fit like a glove, but 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 uh, I mean, uh, Jace is still dealing with the devil in his dog. <laughs> Boy, this, so, look, here's what's what happening. about just a good this old is, fashioned exorcism? That's what you need. Is, here's the iron, ar, ironic part of what's happened. I got a dog. I was on a search for a dog because Phil's dog has some screws loose upstairs and he gets so excited that he wants to participate in calling you know we're we see a duck well then the dog starts going (laughs) well you know i'm looking around thinking these ducks they're like oh those there's ducks and there's a howling dog (laughs) near the last six years uh seven years since we've had blue Jace has been saying he scares ducks. Yeah. At the same time, we've killed thousands. We have. And Blue has retrieved thousands. This is the argument. That and a lot of them ends. we would have never gotten. Blue got them. So I'm like, I can take a little. What, well, little what moan. did the? Okay. What did the? It is nerve wracking, and I don't like it. Let me interject something here, because <laughs> what happened is the older Phil has gotten. No offense. The hearing is not what it once was. And so to Phil, it's a whimper. He's like, my dog's whimpering a little bit. But since he can't hear as well, it sounds like a whimper. But to everyone else, it's a howl. It's yelping. So I get a dog. I get a dog, and my dog, the first couple of hunts, he has the fire. He's a great retriever. Well, he starts to whimper. But as the season has gone on, he's got more and more excited. And now I basically, Phil calls him Blondie, his name is Biggin. I just have a blonde version of the same of, dog. Of the same dog. He's an <laughs> awesome retriever. <laughs> he does well. He's a little better than Phil's, but today he was off the chain. He, but he, he started a yelp a couple times. He jumped when the first ducks came in. I'm trying to do constructive discipline. I'm trying to be patient, and but it's just frustrating when it was a tough day to duck hunt because yeah. it was still but the dog. But the dog has not. But he will. But he has not quite learned yet the trust factor. Once he trusts Jace implicitly, once he can really trust him, he's the the owner, the one that the one is disciplining him, him and training him because he loves him and he appreciates the work he's doing. Go and get the duck. Once they build a bond there, he'll be a lot better. So he's not. You know, I, I've 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 been I, when Jace is working with his dog, he's scaring very few ducks. He scares a few, but not yeah. but not a, not a whole lot. Yeah. But it's just hard. I mean, I really appreciate Phil saying that because in my mind, you don't want to be the guy with because we've been over there on it's the like end one, for the the last six years saying i wish phil would shut that dog up but you yeah. can't shut the dog up now jace has a dog and, and people are saying the same yeah. thing about his it's dog. like one of your kids so, you, you don't want him to embarrass you right if it's like you know whatever comes out they well, have a little different skill so that's a blues a little better with his nose right now but blondie will get better but he doesn't realize because his first year when so. he's going out there through the woods you know he's running today jace said he was running wide open he's looking back at him but he's so so jacked up, you know, emotionally. Yeah. He's running, looking at Jace. He just runs into a tree. Why? <laughs> Why? <Wild. He> <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, I'm like, you broke a rib right there. Because then he was like, <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought, most dogs do not run into trees. But, but. <laughs> maybe it's just you not being around y'all. This Look, is having maybe. said that, we, this is we, another facet of duck hunting that a lot of people <laughs> or non duck hunters know nothing about men and their animals because they're they're worth their weight and gold. What did you ask? They, they, well, they, it's bad, muddy. It's thick with brush. Oh, it's, it's and tough. And look, these dogs have a nose that could, you know, they can smell a duck at a hundred yards if yep. they're downwind. Of it. Look, and they 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 can get them where you have to fight vines, thickets trying to get them a human. Well, but, look, uh, my you know, dog when he took off, he made three of the greatest retrieves today. Three Very thickets. He ran into a tree. I mean, look, his eyes are bloodshot. There was blood all all on him, and I thought it was a duck from retrieving the duck. And I was looking, I was like, oh, no, that's his blood. I mean, he's just running into snags. and it, He's got one speed, wide open. <laughs> but, look, we shot a widgeon, which we had a bunch of widgeon come in. I made a bad call on it and because I made an impulse. We have not seen a bunch of, of widgeon, which a lot of people are saying, widgeon, is that even a duck? We don't get a lot of widgeon around American, here. American, the, the right, correct name would be American ball pate the ball poop and he's it's a beautiful a, duck beautiful duck beautiful. But we don't see many of them anymore well, i'll tell you this we look up and here comes eight or ten and phil's blowing a teal call at him because and thought, there's a lot of shuffling in the blind and my dog <laughs> he gets he senses your excitement everyone's on edge everybody's on edge we hadn't had the greatest of hunts and those widgeon when they turned up in their wings even though it was cloudy i could see that they were widgeon yeah from the wing pad. well then i became like my dog i was like <laughs> <laughs> and they they dropped down and i just thought they were closer than what they appeared and i was just like kill them and we raise up boom, 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 and one comes out but he falls pretty far so i take off and i think the last words i said if i have to be out here all day i'm getting that widget my dog went with me we walked i would say 200 yards because i had it kind of marked we're on dry land big woods and I see some flickering way off in the distance, and I realize this widgeon is trying to take off, and my dog sees it, and my dog chases that duck till almost out of sight. And I saw him jump at it because it could barely fly, and so I thought, well, he a got it. A flying duck being chased by a dog. Yeah, so I <laughs> thought he got it. Well, then he looked up and was looking at me. I looked to the right, and there he goes again through the woods, you know, and he, he sees it. He's back on him. So then they did go out of sight, and I thought, well, we got a 50 50 chance a couple minutes comes by here he comes with the duck, with the duck in his mouth Head up. and i was like okay you're forgiven for all the excitement <laughs> it's the prettiest widgeon i've seen in my life we're all you know kumbaya we're all, we're we're all holding hands and we singing whooped them again <laughs> and then we, we get back then si claims to have shot the mythical widgeon oh, yeah. you know shooting his little pop gun so i'm like well here we go things are back to reality yeah i heard the story stone was telling the story yesterday there was a controversy over because some he says he shot a banded duck Mm -hmm. you were out of the blind so you weren't a part of it but he said you and he and you shot it and the but si was claiming it you know or whatever well, the know? guest then said he shot yeah and then the guest and jay said. said you're a guest you didn't shoot it you're out <laughs> he if said you claim this duck you're not invited to come with us ever <laughs> he told him he said yeah and by the way i've seen you shoot you didn't shoot that duck i've been watching you, you know what's shoot. funny is grown men over something the government puts on there to track birds they you know they call bands jewelry right it's because like a, it's, it's on their, yeah, their leg yeah it's like I've a bracelet seen grown men, men lose their integrity <laughs> and get fighting mad over a little piece of tin on a duck with it goes without on. saying we have long strings of bands <laughs> oh yeah because it was like this year i can think of five six probably yeah I think we back in that. the old days did, did people ever come to blows over it back before oh no crit- oh, okay no, i wondered about no. that well that's i tried a, a, i thought i did something this year that would change that culture i took it for the team i tried to go philippians too you know humble yourselves <laughs> you know like jesus did and maybe that'll change it so here's what happened we're sitting there we got a young cameraman that works for duck commander his name's hunter so i was like you qualify you perfect mean. So yeah, he's he in there, and we're we're unloading our guns. The hunt's over, and he says, "Mr. Chase, 
I mean, he's 25 years old. I don't know why he's coming, Mr. He said, because <laughs> you're old. He said, in the decoys. And I looked up, and there's two wood ducks coming in the decoys. And, you know, he has his camera like, you know, hey, shoot those, which we weren't looking because we were leaving. I put a shell in my gun, raise up, and shot one of the wood ducks. Well, and we just left him there till we were packing up. Well, when somebody went and got the wood duck, it had a band on it. So I thought, here's my moment. Because I asked Hunter, I said, he's a hunter, even though he's he's filming, he duck hunts. I said, have you ever shot a band? And he said, no, sir. I said, I'm going to give you this band. Because you spotted the duck. If you hadn't spotted the duck, the you duck would have flared. It. I That's wouldn't right. have shot the duck. So technically, I was like, I'm going to. And Jay's like, why are you giving it to him? He, he, didn't, he don't even hunt. <laughs> I said, because he spotted it. And does it really? It. And he's like, man, I think it's awesome. I mean, I, I, we made his day. We turned the. You numbers. were having a teaching moment. The duck was from Kentucky. Then a week later, that you know they're ready to have a fist they fight over the- this band yesterday. So I thought, you know what, <laughs> didn't work. So there's a lot going on right now in the country, um, with gun control. Um, you know the stuff we've been watching, the especially the state of Virginia most recently. You know, they kind of got a bunch of one party has taken over the whole deal. And so they're like, no, we're going to get, you know, they're talking about gun buybacks. I like that. They didn't buy the guns, but you know, it's like they didn't sell the guns, but they're going to buy them back from the, from the electorate, you know, from the people. Yeah. And so the second amendment has been at the forefront of a lot of discussion going on around the country, um, you know, for a pretty good while. And of course we've kind of always been at the core of it, mainly just because we hunt, and weapons have always been a part of, I mean, now, of course, self-defense and all that, but, I mean, hunting and, and rifles and, and shotguns, mostly, we didn't have a lot of handguns when we were growing up. But No, when I was in high school, every buddy I had, we had guns in the vehicle on the campus. Yeah. You know, now you do that. I mean, there's news trucks and, you know, helicopters. Oh, it's, you know, it's, it's pathetic. And, and fortunately, like people like us, and they're all over the country, it's just a way of our life. That's that's what yeah. we do. So we got some some guys. Uh, we've talked about their product before. It's really great because, you know, I, I noticed in this Virginia deal, they're trying to shut down gun ranges. Uh, ranges. You know, you can't go practice. You can't go shoot. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yep. And yet we know if you're going to have a weapon and you, you need to be, it needs to be safe. You got to know how to use it. We were trained from when we were kids. Yep. But in any situation that's bad that happens, what eventually happens is somebody calls somebody with a gun. That's right. They're right. <laughs> to resolve the situation, which is our point about it's the heart. And the founders wisely knew that if only the government and law enforcement had the weapons, that could lead to a bad situation, oh, right. which we see all around the world. So they said, you, the American people, have a right to be armed yep. always. So Thomas Jefferson made a made a salient point. He said the purpose of the Second Amendment is so that as a last resort, that's right, to protect yourself from tyranny and government. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to give your weapons up ever. So, so this is a product we want we've shared with you before. Uh, it's called iTarget Pro, and so it marries technology with an ability to be able to practice. Uh, so you don't have to necessarily go to a gun range or go somewhere and actually. So they actually used this, didn't you? Huh? You tried this out, which is weird. I yeah. thought you did this. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Did. yeah. You don't have a tech bone in your body. No, but he's got no. Dan the eunuch. So hey. he, you know, he Damn anyway. He knew. So you you program in the app, and then what happens is you're able to do the target uh, with your whatever. You know, they've got uh, they come in all major calibers, uh, including two twenty threes, five fifty sixes, everything that you can use to be able to do target practice. It, but it, you know, the bullet you put in obviously is is not a real bullet, right. and yet you're still able to practice a virtual bullet. Yeah. I guess is what you call it. So anyway, it's a great it's a great item. It's a great way to be able to practice. Make sure you know that you can hit what you're aiming at because that's important, especially when it comes to self defense. So we love these guys. Uh, we want you to sign up if you go to iTarget Pro, the letter I iTargetPro dot com. The offer code is Phil. Uh, you're going to get ten percent off and free shipping uh, when you use the offer code Phil. So that's iTargetPro dot com. Offer code is Phil. And start sighting in your rifle, pistol, whatever. We need it's a great idea. Sight. We need to get sight one of those yeah. ASAP. Yeah. He said he doesn't need it. They banded the the duck in Kentucky, and he flew all the way down to, in front of our that wood duck? 
in Lu- North Louisiana. I got one the other day and sent it in. Somebody sent it in on the computer. You know, pew, 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 pew. They, you can get them now. Just get the number, <laughs> send it in on the computer. They'll tell you Does what it, it You think it actually makes that sound out? Well, I'm going to give you some breaking like news. That. The computer <laughs> but, no longer makes <laughs> yeah, racket. Yeah, you it does it. It's like it's TV. You can, you can put the volume on and it'll be a person talking. I hear a lot of strange sounds coming out of people with computers in their pocket. That's all I know. But anyway, this duck was banded in Wisconsin. <laughs> Which that was unusual. That amount of drake. Right? And yeah, and I had a couple of teal this year. Uh, one blue wing teal and one green wing teal. One of them was banded in the Crotch Springs, Louisiana. Really? Yep. Uh, last spring when uh, they were coming back from the Yucatan, through, where yeah. they where they winter. Yeah. So someone had trapped one and put a band on him. But last year, well, we, well, I got that one. And there was a green wing teal, in some little town in Mississippi. I'd never heard of it, but some that's where that one was banded. So it's pretty unique in that when you look at where these ducks come from, the question is, what department in saltwater <laughs> implemented <laughs> that made my, 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 the migratory <laughs> instinct? That's I've right. used that before as That's an example. Pre- I mean, why do ducks migrate? You just think about it. All they do is feed the food chain. That's what they do. Yep. I mean, what? who put in those ducks to fly south? Because if you did it from a community standpoint from the ducks, it's not working. You die by the millions. It's you know, pounds, and- a pound or two per duck, just depending on the size and what type of duck it is. But they're coming in mass by the – It's a, there's over 100 million. Right. And they're coming in mass across the North American continent from the Canadian where, prairies all the way to down the coast, to Mexico. Mexico. And there are a lot of things besides us – that are using them as a food source. Yeah, much so more than that. People say, you know, in, in argument, they say, well, what do you mean the weather pushes them down? But I'm like, well, once they get down here, why don't they just stay? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty they of ponds. Back. They all there, go there's back. There's plenty of ponds around here. They go yeah, back. They go back. And that's just ducks. You have Arctic terns and all these other birds, all kinds of migratory birds that are coming from a long distance. Food source, food source. Food I source. think it's a great Hawks, evidence. owls, foxes, alligators, everything's eating them. I do I think it's a great evidence that there is a God. It is. You're not going to come up with anything a duck is good for except for food. Well, two things before we leave this. One is I talked to our old friend W.E. the other day, and he was telling me a tale about two mallard drakes banded that were killed like two years apart, but both were banded in the same batch 13 years ago and they both wound up in the same spot in front of him in arkansas and he shot them both probably you know brothers out of the same yeah, the i mean what are the odds of that you I, know? I killed a camera it's like 12 or 13 time. years old yeah i killed a camera back and and the 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 numbers had worn off the band it's a piece of aluminum is yeah. that's what the the aluminum bands right lightweight but this one he had worn it so long it almost had almost had uh worn in two and it would just fall off, and that's it. So I said, man, that's been on that duck a long time, as smooth as that is. Well, I sent it to the state police, and they got some kind of stuff they put on there, and they raised them. So numbers. you get the numbers, yeah. You know, people file off oh, yeah. serial numbers right, on the firearm. Right. But anyway, they checked it, and they gave me the number, and he was 12 years old. Yeah. But he'd been there. He had made 12 migratory trips and back so what we were during still, his life we that's, marvel- a, that's, that's a long time we were marveling about that that he had killed two out of the same batch had been doing the same thing like 13 trips yeah. so the last thing i'll say about this jay is just to show you that you're leading by example is working with your duck blind compadres the end of that story is so stone at the end of the hunt i guess because they've been arguing the whole time so he looks over at, at the guest and he says you want this duck and he said well yeah i killed it you know he's they're still you know over the band so so jay cuts the duck's leg off takes the band and throws the duck over to the guest so sure you can have it now (laughs) there there's your leadership by example is not working on you can eat it (laughs) so anyway all right something i guess so so i thought we were moving on to john but jay's at the end of our last podcast had one last tantalizing thought that well you made a an analogy that you know since john the baptist was uh blunt and vocal and he he leaned a little on the truth side as far as jesus came full Mm -hmm. of grace and truth and uh, we know other people who do that especially when it comes to sin 
I'm not going to mention any names. But I think coming from that is you get – he had a lot of bumper sticker moments, in my opinion, of just one-liners that are awesome. One of them is in John 1, 15, where John – testifies we we touched on this a little bit yeah concerning jesus because he prepared the way and he cries out saying this was he of whom i said and and he makes this profound statement (laughs) he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me now look just to show you that that was a bumper sticker moment in john 1 and verse uh oh, where's it at? I thought he said it again. Yeah, 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 he does. Look in verse 30. The next day, you know, in 29, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, which is another profound statement. Yep. But then look what he says. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Which I have a rule. Anytime the Bible repeats itself, I take Take note. I take note. (laughs) That's right. Because it's all inspired by God. And when he says something and then he says it again, okay, we're emphasizing. The Holy Spirit is emphasizing something here. And so I just like that statement because it shows you that God's DNA through Jesus is way different from ours. Because how do you interpret that statement? The one who was before me has sur- no. The one after me after has surpassed me because he was before me. Let's just discuss amongst yourselves. <laughs> what I mean, kind of statement is that? That's a big statement. I mean, it doesn't fit into a human narrative because we couldn't. We can't do that. Like he surpassed. John the Baptist knew he was a human. Although miraculously conceived, uh, you know, the, the, his mother was barren. Right. He knew that. Yeah. But he is 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 accentuating, is zeroing in on the one, the one that's going to save the world. He's God. Right. So we we've talked about this before. Uh, it's really crazy to me that you know you, you the Bible says that. People will invent ways of doing evil. So every time you think you've heard everything, there seems to be one more thing oh. that somebody comes up with. So the latest one is people stealing your, the title of your home through through the computer, you know, or through the internet. There's a story that that I was sent about this woman named Deborah. So here's what she said: They she said criminals found the title to our home online, filed fraudulent documents claiming they owned it. So you think, well, how, how could that happen? But it gets worse. Listen to this. I was evicted from my own home and lost 85 grand in equity. Gone. So this yeah, is I'm a real woman surprised. where it really happened. I mean, because what the internet, the boom of the internet has done is it spawned an easier way for predators to go in there and take care of the vulnerable. Yeah, because in the old days, you know, you had the title to your home. Another good in your reason home. to never have them. Well, that's true. But for everybody just else, saying. that's not going to catch on. They're here. <laughs> they're here. Yeah. And they're, when they go to steal in your house, it ought to catch on. <laughs> well, yeah. Duh. So but, since we just, since we got two choices here, get rid of all computers. That's the fill way. For the rest of us, we go with our friends at home title lock because basically they've come up with a way to protect your, the title from your home. So it's hometitlelock.com. You register. First of all, you find out, make sure nobody's already gotten your stuff because you wouldn't even know, right? So somebody shows up and says, hey, you're in my house, and the deputy shares it with them, and they're like, and you're like, wait a minute. And they're like, see, here. Mm, they did the same thing with credit cards. Oh, all whatever, the time. You know what I mean? All of a sudden, you made a purchase for $2,000. You're like, no, I've been sitting right here. So like, you go to home title lock, hometitlelock.com, um, that's where you're going to find out. You get 60 uh, risk-free days of protection. That's where so you do that if you go uh, and register and check it out. I think you should at least to find out. Yeah. Make sure you still got your house. I'll give you the word for it. This will be interesting. It's called cyber security. 
well, let me give the word to you. All right. So I say, so this thing, this black box they come up with, everybody cares. Yeah. So through that thing, you can slick me out of my money and my house before a cat can lick his tail. <laughs> yeah. And you say, and you're wonder why I don't have one? Well, if you get home lock, you wouldn't have to worry about home it. Home title lock. Yeah. There you there go. There you go. Good job. <laughs> He was th- he was there before me, meaning I haven't always been here, but he has. That's right. You see what I'm saying? And he had only become <laughs> flesh when he came out of the Virgin Mary. Right. But Jesus was there during creation, or you or the Bible wouldn't say through him all things were made. Right. You see what I'm saying? Well, and I've always thought it's it's curious because you're right. You know the story of the two pregnant women. We talked about that before. The you know uh, John the Baptist's mother and Mary. We know that he knew some of what was going on way back then. You know there had to be stories told about it. And yet 30 years have gone by. Remember, they're 30-year-old men now. That's right. And so, you know, I'm not sure. He was told specifically by God to do what he was doing. You go out in the wilderness. You start baptizing people with repentance. We talked about this before. And He didn't give John the full scoop. He didn't get the whole scoop. And he didn't know it. And the reason why is because of what you just read. Because he said, I would not have known who he was. And he didn't want to baptize Jesus. Remember, Jesus came That's to right. him. But and- the point is, when he saw him, what statement did he make? That, that statement, <clears throat> if you realize that Jesus hadn't died yet, it's one thing to say, hey, Jesus, he's the Lamb of God. He takes away the sins of the world. It's another thing to say that before Jesus died. <laughs> That's that right. is correct. That's right. He's already, you know what it reminds me of, of Abraham when he was asked to sacrifice his son. And Hebrews 11 says he just figured. Reasoned. Reasoned that God could raise the dead. Yeah. Well, you know what? When you reason to the resurrection, that's pretty sharp right there. I'm looking at a situation. I know Jesus came back to to me beyond a shadow of a doubt. But if I got put in that situation, even knowing that, it would be the most difficult thing ever. Right. But you take – you take a situation where you have no knowledge of someone ever returning from the dead and, hey, God, you know, hint, hint, wink, wink, whispers in your ear and says, sacrifice your son. Right. I'm like, heck no. That's right. But he reasoned. And the, and John the Baptist did the same thing. They knew the plan. They trusted so much. They trusted the plan and, Ano- and figured it out. Another thing that's critical is that you have to remember that – but Matthew 16, uh, after after uh, uh, Peter had confessed Jesus as Lord, he told Peter to give him the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So he's going to be the one that unlocks the door of the kingdom. But if you notice, God was very, uh, how shall I say this? He chose the time to tell them what was fixing to happen and he basically was doing it when he was on the earth before he died, was buried and resurre- resurrected. He was traveling pretty well incognito a while because Matthew sixteen twenty one, from that time on, well, that's been quite a while from the ministry, the time Jesus began his ministry. Right. From that time on, Jesus <laughs> began, began, which he hadn't really filled him in on the details. Right. And John the Baptist was calling him the Lamb of God, and everybody like, who in the world exactly is this? And Jesus is not giving them much uh, enlightenment on the topic. Correct. He's just sort of quiet. There's something about, you know, over in First Corinthians where it says that they wouldn't have crucified if the rulers and right. powers of the evil one had known who he was. They wouldn't have crucified him. They didn't know. Uh, the evil one didn't know Jesus was going to save the world by his death. Right. So if you look, it says from that time on, Matthew sixteen twenty one, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord. This is not going to happen to you. Here's Peter arguing with the reason Jesus had become flesh to begin with, God becoming flesh. Right. The reason was so he could die right. but and be raised from the dead and solve our sin problem and our grave problem. Right. Peter was arguing about him, but that just shows you 
even Peter, a disciple of Jesus, he knew what everything was going on. Yep. Not at all. No. Neither did John the Baptist. Nope. It was kept <laughs> hidden by God. You get over and look in Ephesians, you know, it's a mystery hidden, hidden, hidden. Throughout the book of Ephesians, this comes up over and over and over. Uh, I'll just give you a few of them. Listen to this. Here's, here's the Apostle Paul to the church at Ephesus, and here's the way he describes the gospel. Uh, let's see. Watch this. Uh, surely you heard about the administration. This is Ephesians 3. Uh, the administration of uh, God's grace that was given to me, that is the mystery made known to me by revelation, because he didn't get it either, as I've already written. Uh, Therefore, you'll be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to men in other generations as it has now been revealed by the Spirit of God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, you know, the Gentiles. Well, you look down in verse uh, 9 to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. What? So you start reading all them texts and putting them together, Al, you say, you know what? It, it remained a mystery until the very day it happened. And to this day, to millions it's still a mystery, Al. It's right. a mystery because of this statement that John that we're discussing. Most times, people can't figure something out because we go by the laws of nature, uh, time, gravity. Yep. But when if you have a being that came from a virgin, well that that means the rules no longer apply. If you have a person leave without the aid of a spaceship. So something big it, going on here. Something, <laughs> when he says, hey, I was before Abraham, you're like, what the laws are being manipulated. So I look at it like time, space, matter. None of those apply to Jesus. That's why you take a simple verse like that throw people who don't believe into chaos they don't understand it is like hebrews 13 8 it says jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever which was john the baptist's point the reason he's the ones coming after me he surpassed me because he was before me he basically quoted hebrews 13 8 yep he's yep. the same yesterday today and forever and people are like well i don't understand that he's outside of time outside of space has always been there created the cosmos you're like this yeah. to jesus it's a snap. But that's it's, why it's a, it's a mystery. That's why it's a mystery. And look, to go with what you're saying, Colossians 1 says the mystery of godliness is that Christ is great. Yeah, is great. Is that Christ is in you. I mean, that is something that this same Christ who John the Baptist referring to. He you, enters human beings. Yeah, through his Holy Spirit. And you're like. A lot of people say, ah, that's, whoa, that's no, uh, no way, no way. <clears throat> whoa, uh. But it's, it's funny because you shouldn't because you have a spirit. I mean, you, yeah. it's, the, the idea of the Holy Spirit shouldn't be a big deal to people. You have a spirit. Sure. You, if you see a, a, you go to a funeral and there's a body laying in a casket, you see their body, but something's missing. The spirit is yeah. missing. Well, so I'm saying, yeah. so you have got a spirit. Itself. So why wouldn't why wouldn't God then be able to have part of His Holy Spirit speak to your spirit? And to go back to duck hunting and dog training and not look at creation itself. Look how much life there is, and things die, and guess what? It comes back. I mean, you're living on just a planet full of life, That's oh, right. and things come back. It's like you can't go anywhere and not see this process. I looked down in the water yesterday over there in the middle of the woods. I just looked down into the water, and the water owl was teeming with little swimming creatures. I mean, it was just full of them. Yeah. Well, a lot of these ducks are eating a lot of these things, oh, yeah. invertebrates. But I would just look down in the water, and it was just like it was alive. It was just working alive. And I thought, man, 
Dude, I wish there you is hadn't life. Told me that. My dog drank that water all morning. Hey, and you wonder why he acts a little funny from time to time. Well, he's in my truck right now because it's sleeting outside. It's a little wormy. I may open the door and say hello because I know when I drink anything with a lot of creatures in it. By the way, easily, easily exits. to problems. What Jesus was going to do to save the save the world. If the rulers and authorities had known about it, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. That's one. And at the bottom of where I started a while ago, God's intent was, Ephesians 3.10, that now through the church, that'd be us, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus, our Lord, and we may approach God with freedom and confidence. And I ask you not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you. That was John the Baptist's point. You know, yeah. look, he, he's far greater than me. I mean, I'm not even worthy to tie his shoes. Well, we talked about from the Old Testament, the, the Jewish mindset, they would have understood they're looking for the Messiah they knew that someone in the spirit of Elijah, or even like Jason was saying, maybe even Elijah himself yep. was going to come back. But basically, John the Baptist was just a neon sign, and that was his purpose in life was to point. It's yeah. interesting because you go over to John 3. Yeah, that's where I was going because yeah. I wanted to get another profound statement. Yeah, we'll do that. He was, he was baptizing, and then this big argument breaks out in verse 22 uh, yeah. through about 25 uh, 25 says an argument developed between some of john's disciples and a certain jew over the matter of ceremonial washing which is what we talked about before we talked about before because they're like wait a minute what are you baptizing and john's baptizing saying believe in the one who's coming and oh yeah there he is the lamb of god right over there i'm sure the argument was why are you baptized why shouldn't he be baptized if he's the lamb of god what are you doing i mean whatever the argument was but from my I think it could have been my over. Family, we don't. It don't take much to start an argument. <laughs> I've I've always thought it was because since he said ceremonial washing of Jews, it's like wait a minute, you're out here baptizing these people. You go to the temple for that. That's where you cleanse and you you yeah, know. You're right. I we, mean, which is really I think that was a, part of the argument. I mean, Jesus destroyed this ritualistic right. uh, view of worship, and even in our religion today, he really did. A lot of people have problem with that. Oh, yeah. You know, on every street corner, churches turned into into this ritualistic type let's worship for 70 minutes and then go well they treat a building like a temple go yeah. on about our yeah. life when we walk out the door yeah or right like, you know we don't want to be too excited in here or you can't eat a sandwich in here or, you know we have to be you know don't you have homes we're in the we're in the sanctuary yeah. <laughs> or like because i've had people like look they respond to jesus they want to live for jesus and you're like they want to be baptized i'm like find the nearest water but like i've had people say well i thought i had to do it in a church and somebody ordained an ordained man had to do it to make it official see well i don't know john and jesus was down here on the riverbank (laughs) they didn't seem to say let's go to the cathedral but anyway this argument breaks out and now i love this statement here's another bumper sticker moment to this, John replied, a man can receive only what is given from heaven. Hmm. And his point, he makes his point later. You can read the argument. And his point was when he said, look, you yourselves can testify that I said I'm not the Christ, but am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. And, you know, John was making a profound statement, which we really all could say about anything positive in our life it's not about us i mean the anything good that's happening to me even in the way i was made before jesus it came from heaven it comes back to that belief that we're made in the image of god and then we're recreated in jesus and that that was his point i mean right. it was it's a awesome statement you know well it was and it was my core rule just just what you just said i preached for years and it's easy for guys in the pulpit and churches to think they're great because they get people that love them and give them praise. And then there's also times when they think they're terrible because people are mad. You said this. and But I used to always think I'm neither. Mm-hmm. I'm not terrible because I'm working for the Almighty. So what, he's going to give me what to say. 
So, you okay. know, take it up with him. And I'm not great because Christ is great. Yeah. I'm just the guy. I'm just the relayer of information. So I used to tell our but staff. everybody should have that. Yeah, attitude. don't let you, praise you know, or criticism stick to you. You're just doing the all money. a lot of people money. feel like they can't share Jesus because they're like, well, I'm, I'm not, you know, qualified or I don't have a way with words. And whatever you're expressing is coming from heaven anyway. That's right. And when we speak, it look, you have the greatest book ever written. They're a little That's confused right. on the difference between a disciple of Jesus and a theologian. That's right. They're a little, little confused there. Yes, right. Lots of theologians are running around. Yeah. But I think it comes back to that club mindset. A lot of people, they go to church because they want to think that they have figured out the way God wants you to set all this up. You know, set the, the uh, what would you call it? You know the process set the process up we because yep. that's why you have so many different churches which is so frustrating to the world they're looking around and say i don't want to be involved in that y'all can't get along i can't find two of you that agree on anything that's why you know, <laughs> which one's right there's yeah. 2500 different types i'm out thousands of different and types. so everybody yeah. argues about the process and i think that this one statement from john would just clear up a lot of that whatever good we got going on or whatever things we say it's coming from heaven that's the source it's yep. not us it's not old preacher joe down here right. who's just the best preacher i ever heard i don't know why he's any better than anybody else we got the same manual we coming from <laughs> same spirit from heaven you know but i just like him you know and that's what people do they tend to lift up the guy and then the guy feels like remember that guy that told us it's like whenever people compliment you about your speaking they're like pouring gas on you you know like, no, be right. careful about that because it's not you it's really not i always figure when i was preaching um 10 percent of the audience was going to love me no matter what 10 percent was going to not like me no matter what and th so i'm kind of working on the middle 80 anyway just trying to give them something to encourage them but a lot of people have asked we got a lot of questions judge from from viewers and listeners that are like how do i do i want to share you know, I, I want to be able to talk about Jesus, but they're they're like afraid because it's like, how do I start that conversation? Whether it's somebody at work, somebody in your family or whatever. So what advice would y'all give them just in the day to day living about how to talk about Jesus or how to talk about whatever? I mean, my number one fear, I've always said, and y'all have heard me say this many times, was public speaking. I was real shy as a kid. Look, I, I grew out of it. You know why? Because the spirit of God changed me. Yep. I just realized that if I'm going to try to be a disciple of Jesus at a public high school, I'm not going to be able to do that quietly. I tried for two years. It just didn't work. And so I got it in my head that I thought, you know what, if I stood before God and he said, why should you be here? Why should I let you into heaven? I would come up with an explanation. Now, it would be centered and focused on Jesus Christ and what he did you know on a cross for my sins and the resurrection but i would be able to explain that if god asked me to and so then i thought well if i could explain it to god you know if he if he put that to me to say share why you should be here well then why how come i couldn't do that to my buddy and that's just what i got in my head and i thought you know what i'm not gonna be embarrassed or ashamed i mean we we, we do this podcast and call it unashamed but that's it it's like i'm not gonna be ashamed that i'm going to heaven and so the first time I did it, I was so nervous because it was my best friend. And I thought, you know what? If there's a heaven and we're going to live forever, I want this guy there because he's funny and I like him. <laughs> and so I told him that's how I started. I said, look, I know me and you have kind of gone our separate ways because, I mean, he was getting drunk every night, sleeping with any woman he could find. And I wasn't. And I said, look, this is going to get a little weird, but I, I found a way to live forever. I'm going to heaven. And here's, here's how I came up with that. And look, I was so nervous that when I would turn the page of the Bible, I would rip it out. And he was like, why are you shaking? I was like, you well, sound I'm, like Biggin. I was like, well, I'm nervous, you know. <laughs> to answer your question, uh, Al, uh, last night I was talking to a couple of individuals, and uh, I just reminded them one of the ways you said, was, well, how would you just, you know, just people who are afraid to say anything, they don't one one thing you could do is just say, uh, let me ask you something. Uh, I had Dan go over there 
and 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 demonstrate it. I said, Dan, who's the woman who knows everything? And he said, Alexa. I said, Yeah, call Alexa and ask her what year is it in China. And so he did. And Alexa said, 2019. That's what it was before the New Year. And I said, What about uh, North Korea? I said, Well, 2019. So Alexa was saying it was 2019 years. It's now 2020 years. I just asked people, I said, have you ever wondered if, if there's a 2020, that means if you went backwards, you would get back to year one. I said, why is it that, it, that everyone on the earth is saying it's the year 2020, but the they, don't know, the why, Lord, they yeah. don't know why it's two, 2020 years from what? Or from whom? <laughs> so when if you look at it, now I did that last night with him too. Yeah, and they both looked at me. And they said, "We never thought about that." It's a great he said, icebreaker. He said, "We never thought about that." I said, "Well, once you now understand that you're counting time," I said, "The atheists are still saying no, we're not counting time by Jesus." Right. But yeah. but why is it we're all agreeing that it's 2,020 years since Jesus came down like the book of John, in flesh like the book of John says? Right. Well, it, I just don't understand why anybody yeah. wouldn't look at it and say, well, I mean, you it, have a I point. I think it's a legitimate way to get in. I mean, to me, if I know people, I, I'm sincere. I'm like, I love you. I, don't, I want you to... I mean, why are us. we counting time by yeah. one individual? <laughs> if I don't know them, I may do Phil's approach. You know, right. a lot of time I went through for years. I've asked. The I don't three have questions. to know them to ask that. I just want to know what do you think, well, and they're like, know, "Huh." I'm just saying. You're, well, the, the, you, you deal with a lot more, uh, more of an argumentative. So a lot of people come to you, and they're they're trying to tell you why there's no God. Or, that's you know, 2020 that's years good. from something. What? There's no argument here. I mean, well, who are we counting time by, if anybody? Well, right. So, yeah, so what I'm saying, Dad, and I'll say this, has always been that since Dad doesn't go anywhere, we, we've established that on the podcast, like we live lives with people. Dad lives down here on the river, but people come here, and they've been coming for years. They just I mean, pull up. They just pull up. Get out. Pull and up. so Dad learned a long thousands. time ago, he figured, well, God must be sending them out here. Got so to. I got to, everyone that comes, this is what you're, because, you're going to And some yeah. of them say, I'm a brother. I, I, I'm a Christian, Phil. Good. But Phil the, the, some will say they, they don't know, right? Phil said if they show up down here, they're either lost or they're lost. <laughs> <laughs> You mean when you said that? I was like, <laughs> well, I'm just saying. He's like, they're either lost. Yeah. They don't even know where they're at. Or they're lost. So yeah. like, either way, okay, I'm, huh? I'm the well, guy. Well, it's simple Jesus. questions like, by the way, what are all the years called before Jesus got here? And and uh, and as it turns out, the irony of it is uh, they're called B.C., which is short for before Jesus got here. Yeah. And they're like, huh. Yeah. Well, at least I would think you would investigate that particular individual. Well, that's a valid statement. Yeah. But if you went to some of just our universities, they would say that, you know, it's all just a sham. But that's why I said. But they're still writing down 2,020 <laughs> years from something. True. But <laughs> this I, I, really was not a date based on anyone. But I, but it is 2020. Years. I feel I like mean, you're getting upset about that. <laughs> no, he's just making his point. <laughs> Look, so, so I asked the three questions because I introduced that, and people be emailing. What were the three questions? But they're pretty simple. How did you get here? What are you doing here? And how are you leaving? Those are three good life questions for human beings, and you can read in Paul's sermon, Acts 17, and he sort of answers those three questions, which is you came from God. You're here to find God, you know, to seek God and find. And then how are we leaving? Resurrection. I wanted to give you my last. Well, two hang on before you do that, before you do that. Let me just cap what you just okay. said with a verse that is a directive for what you described. First Peter three fifteen. In your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. That's yes. for you to do. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But There's do this with gentleness and respect. But do this with gentleness and respect. So there you go. All right. Uh, I wanted to give you this one because this is my favorite from John the Baptist. This is John 3, 30. And he said, of course, this is right after he said, a, a man can receive only what is given from heaven. And he talked about the bride belongs to the bridegroom. And then he says, he must become greater. I must become less. Yep. Now you want a bumper sticker? 
for daily living right. as a disciple of Jesus. That's it. We don't even have to discuss that because everyone knows what that means. Yep. You got to become less. He's got to become greater. There's your secret to disciple of Jesus living. That's right. And the last That's why I tell people about Jesus. That's right. Yeah. And the last one is he says this. Now, look, I'm not sure exactly what it means, but I like it. It makes me want to run through a wall. In verse 34, it says, For the one whom God has sent, because he was speaking of Jesus, speaks the words of God. And here's our bumper sticker moment. For God gives the spirit without limit. Mm. There's no, I thought of everything in life that has a limit, you know, the speed limit, bummer, you know, whatever limit. Duck limit. Yeah, duck limit. Major Um, bummer. (laughs) But I'm like, you know what? God gives his Holy Spirit. There's no limit. There's no limit. Um, so that's why I usually when somebody's asking me if they're too excited or can we do this or I want to do that in the name of Jesus, I, I'm like, go for it. So, so to, There's an old saying, Jace, from way back, the sky's the limit. That's right. <laughs> but not really. Not really. <laughs> well, it's the spirit, beyond the sky. Yeah, we're beyond that. And I think that's why you see, I mean, just I know it's hard to discuss that. I mean, I brought up a pretty complex, deep thing on the last minute, but... <laughs> You know, I, I'm just, I'm just saying when you when you think about that, that God gives the Spirit without limit. I mean, that is an exciting thought. Well, so if you really believe that, which obviously John the Baptist did, so did the Apostle Paul, the rest of them that were our example. You can lay your head across a stump at 30 years old and allow somebody to take a sword and cut yeah. it off. Because that's what happened to all these guys. That's right. And the only way you do that is if you know that the Holy Spirit is without limit and that I will live again. Otherwise, you run away screaming from any situation like that. So their example, testimony, witness is what we're talking about. But that's how you do it. And to me, it's in contrast with everything the world says that we view as good. You know, they'll say, be the best you can be. Well, really, there's limitations there. When you have the Holy Spirit of God, he tears down the limitations. Yeah, there is no. There is you, no. you start believing in the impossible, yeah. which goes back to him. You know, he's not bound by time, space. You know, that's why when all of us, someone close to us, or our friends, or even if they're not, but you know, when we pray to God, I fervently believe if if you know a patient goes to a doctor and they say, "Oh, he'll be dead in two weeks," I'm thinking not necessarily. That's right. You know, we pray, and we've uh, every one of us have been involved in a situation oh, yeah. many times many. where they said this guy will be dead. I I got one multiple of my, times. One of my good friends. The one of my lines a, I use when I see them later is, "I thought you weren't supposed to be here," and <laughs> yeah. they grin, and I do too. And, and that's about Look, it. There's a kid because we see a lot of kids in trouble, you know, through their life. Yep. And there's a kid who has some rare disease that it's about this long. I can't even pronounce it. And the average lifespan is seven years old. He is the oldest living kid with with this condition to, to date. And look, he's he's twenty years old. And that guy, he's very inspirational. I have him on my phone, and we talk lots of times. And he is convinced that the Lord healed him. And he goes everywhere he goes, and he he shares how good God is. And I'm like, you're never going to convince me that God just said, you know what? Watch this. I mean, I see the guy. He's the oldest living person with this condition. And in his mind, the first time I met him, you know, every, all his family were upset and they were crying. He wasn't. He said, God, God, heal me. And I'm like, he did. He's like, yep. He said, they just have a hard time accepting that. But they'll figure it out. <laughs> I met this kid when he was like nine. I He's 20. It. I love it. I'm just saying. So, it, so we got to run. We got to run. But one last bumper sticker, Jace. But it's not about John the Baptist. But it's one of my favorites. You said something ago that made me think of it. Romans four eighteen. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed. I mean, you talk about yeah. believing the impossible, and we know what he was talking about because he knew he said, "I kill my kid. God's going to raise him up because he's already told me what's going to happen." So, against all hope, Abraham in hope. Believe so. When somebody tells you there's All no my hope, offspring that save the world, including Jesus, right. the seed line of Jesus That's was right. coming through my 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 seed line, and he said, "Go kill him and get rid of him." 
He's like, okay, give him my knife. <laughs> anyway, he said, evidently he's going to raise him from the dead, Ooh. but I'm going to do what he told Next me. Next time somebody comes and just Talk about some faith. I have faith. no hope. I'm hopeless. And you say, now you're ready to hope. That's right. <laughs> now you're ready. Good stuff. Um, thanks for coming along the journey with us. Keep uh, sending in questions and ideas. We try to work those in uh, as they work, work into our Bible study. So keep those coming. Keep watching. Keep telling other people about it. This is We're doing exactly what we – challenge you to do by doing this podcast so uh we're encouraged by that we'll see you next time somebody make some john the baptist bumper stickers because they were pretty dang good yeah you told somebody to write a song and they did now maybe somebody will they do did some... they sent me a song and it was awesome yeah hey. so i don't know his name but thank you for the song so bumper stickers there you go we are so glad you're watching and listening to the unashamed podcast be sure to like us on facebook subscribe on youtube and itunes That's going to keep you up to date with all the new episodes, and it's also going to let other people find out about our podcast. So keep spreading the word and watching and listening to Unashamed with Phil Robertson.